host, Dr. Bob, and Debbie DiMaria welcome once again to another half of health program. And this evening, we're going to be talking about your guide to optimal health. You know, Deb, one of the biggest challenges when patients come into my office, they always say this, Dr. Bob, it is so hard. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? And they start kind of crying. And, and in love, I just get the just the big old smile, give them a little pat on the back of the head and say, it's easy. It's one of the reasons I was so blessed to write this book just for you. This is Dr. Bob's Guide to Optimal Health. This is a Bible-based wellness guide, and we've made it so simple. There's a tip for every day of the year. So I'm not asking you to go home and clean the pantry out. When the Lord told me to write this book, it was just really simple. There's something called a habit. I didn't like to use the word habit, so I changed it to the word pattern. Your life is based on your patterns of what you do. So if you're not happy of what's going on inside of your life, you're going to want to do an assessment of your patterns. And I even made that job easy for you also because at the very front of the book, I have a natural health assessment questionnaire. So you can ask your body questions or yourself questions. And when you're done, you're going to have a better idea of what's going on inside. So the book is divided up into 18 health patterns. And one pattern is 21 days. Dr. Bob, and I have my own too because we often talk about having a partner and with your partner, whether it be your spouse or one of your good friends, go through it and uh, be the sharpen, iron sharpens iron right. and so that you could work together on your health. It's like you need accountability. You know, Debbie and I have been married since 1976, so we work together on a regular daily basis and I think What's so significant about this, you could have this with a coworker, a next door neighbor. Obviously, it'd be great for your spouse, somebody at church. This is a Bible-based wellness devotional. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to spend the next few minutes is talking about just some of the patterns and the significance of them. And when I was putting the book together, and I really prayed, and the Lord gave me just so much wisdom and insight. When you read this, you're going to be intrigued. I'm even intrigued by the massive amount of information. But I went to the Bible, and in Genesis chapter 1, the first verse and, or two, it talked about the Holy Spirit hovering over chaos in water. So my very first tip and the very first pattern in the wellness guide is about drinking water and water from a pure source. So this, what I'm holding in my hand, is a lemon. And I'm not trying to be silly. Lemons are citrus. Citrus become alkaline in your body, just the opposite of what you think. The pulp of the lemon, when it hits your small and, and your intestines, the sodium salts mix with the lemon, and it becomes alkaline. You could have fibromyalgia. I do not promote citrus when the temperature is 60 degrees or less. That means I don't want you to be eating lots of oranges. But for the sake of just long-term health, you take the lemon, preferably an organic lemon, by the way, and you take a wedge of the lemon and you put it in warm water, hot water if you so choose, squeeze the lemon in the water. If you would like to go on the wild side, you could get some fresh parsley and put some snips of the flower of the parsley, not the flower itself, but those little flowerettes in the water also, and let the parsley seep. So drink the water, eat the pulp of the lemon. The acid will be neutralized by the water, so you don't have to be concerned about the enamel of your teeth. But that little natural prescription for health promotes liver function. The liver is the key organ in your body for detoxification. So you want to drink, I, I intentionally drink a minimum of a quart of water every day 
and that's not counting the vegetables I eat, the apple I eat. You want pure fluid in your body to promote health. And throughout the book, we have all these different tips, but the water is so essential because so many times people say to me, Dr. Bob, I don't like the way the water tastes. And you want to know what? If I was drinking unfiltered municipal water, I'm not sure if I would like the way that it tastes. They do put a lot of chemicals in water. So you want to drink water from a pure source. Now, I want you to understand something. Not all spring waters are the same. A spring is only as good as whatever is on top of it, and it seeps down into the spring. So you live in farm territory, and there's a spring. The herbicides and the pesticides from the farming could get into that water table. So if you're getting water from a, a local source, you may actually want that water to be tested, Deb. You know, you devote a lot of the first part of the book on water. And there's so many other chapters, Dr. Bob, that are in here. But two intrigued me that I thought we would spend uh, just a few minutes on. And one is digestion. And the second one is restful, peaceful sleep. I feel that we talk about digestion probably not enough because I think digestion is some of the source of a lot of uh, misgiving and uh, uncomfortable, what should I say, situations in people's lives. And I think sleep is also part of why America is so sick. Well, it's very interesting to bring that up about digestion, Deb, because you live and die in the gut. And I'm not saying to be silly. Your body is as good as you absorb. Now, mm -hmm. this is going to be significant information I'm going to pass on to you. Number one, do not drink iced water or beverages with your meals because that's going to stagnate digestion. That's important, by the way. When you eat food, and we have in the back of this book, there's a great food combining chart. When you consume, let's say, a piece of animal tissue, you want to eat a green vegetable with it because it's easier to digest. If you have a animal tissue and a baked potato, it stagnates digestion. So your body lives and dies in that ability to digest that food. So that has to do with food combining. I'm going to throw this out to you. Do not end your meal ever with fruit because fruit will be on top of the compost pile. Fruit ferments. Protein putrefies. If you have foul-smelling stool, now stools, that's your bowel movement, will have some fragrance, but if you walk into the facility after you had a bowel movement or somebody in your family did, and it really is, does not smell appropriate, it's because they could have poor digestive distress. Now, something that we've learned over time, and we're seeing this more prevalent today, and I think it's because of genetically engineered food, is that you may want to think about minimizing wheat if you tend to have loose stools and a lot of digestive distress because wheat has gluten in it, Deb. Gluten causes the little fibers in your intestines to stick together. They're called villi. You could actually get heart palpitations from eating wheat. I have a piece of equipment in my practice called an acoustic cardiogram where we can actually do an electronic stethoscope assessment of your heart. Your heart's a very sensitive muscle. So digestion is so critically important. You may have di difficult digestion with rye and oats also. So let's talk a little bit about what Debbie said with sleep. Now, what I'm holding here is an alarm clock. You want your alarm clock and all the lights in your room to be covered. You want them covered because you don't want your brain to be stimulated. You want restful, peaceful sleep. Couple thoughts. Don't exercise before you go to bed at night because that's going to increase cortisol and you really want your body to be slowing down. I would not eat a heavy meal before you go to bed at night because your body goes through tissue repair and all the blood will be in your stomach rather than all of your muscles in your tissues. If you have difficulty falling asleep and you have leg cramps at night and cold sores and poison ivy, it's possible you could have a calcium deficiency. So you might want to take some calcium citrate. Well, you know what, Dr. Bob? 
you often talk about people that maybe have a certain color hair or maybe they have freckles so you know that's on their skin might have a hard time falling asleep and you say it's because it's too much copper such a good point Deb copper um, individuals that have red hair people who have freckles tend to have high copper when you have high copper your brain's gonna go 100 miles an hour you have more of a difficulty falling asleep I also see that individuals who happen to be vegetarians they tend to have high copper. Now we're going to take a short break and we're going to continue on. We have so much more to tell you. Hello, this is Dr. Bob and Debbie DiMaria. Welcome once again to our Half Off Health program. And we've been talking about Dr. Bob's Guide to Optimal Health. It's a Bible-based wellness devotional Make a great gift any time of the year. You can start this any time. You're only supposed to read one page a day. I'm not sure if I've ever had anybody tell me that they read one page a day. They just keep on going and going and going. And you know what, Dr. Bob? It is true. I think what happens is they get intrigued and they want to see if the next tip has something to do maybe more of what they are or they say, oh, this is Aunt Betty or this, this is definitely me. I've got to share this with someone and they keep going. At least that's what I've heard. But you know, one of the things that it does talk about in here a lot, and I, I feel that it's important to people is it's about food. What do I do for breakfast? What do I do for lunch? What, what do I make for supper? Sweets and desserts, you know, meal prep. I think that's part of the problem with all of us, or not maybe a problem, but more of a challenge, is we talk about getting healthy, but we just don't know where to start. Well, you know, Deb, that's really a good point that you brought up because one of the tips after water, the next pattern happens to be about breakfast, and then we have a section on lunch and dinner. And we actually have our, our readers journal what they've consumed for breakfast, and then they do an assessment. You know, this might sound silly to you, but Jesus prepared fish for his disciples for breakfast with barley loaves. Now, I can't imagine too many Americans watching me right now are going to have fish for breakfast, let alone real fish, maybe a fish stick that's processed fish. So here's, what, here's some thoughts, okay? When you wake up in the morning, you should wake up hungry. Well, Dr. Bob, I don't want to wake up hungry. That means I'm going to keep on eating. See, you want restful, peaceful sleep. So when you wake up in the morning, your body is making growth hormone during the night. If you notice, I never talk about taking a growth hormone supplement. You know the best pharmacist in the whole world? You know the best pharmacist in the whole world lives? Right inside of you. If you feed your body right, your pharmacy your natural pharmacy will make whatever you need. And one of those happens to be growth hormone. So when you wake up in the morning, here's your choice. Now listen to this. Your body's a furnace. So when you wake up in the morning, if you throw paper on the furnace, paper would be a pastry. All day long, you have to keep on throwing paper to the furnace. That's carbs, that's sweets, that's cookies, that's cakes, that's the stuff that you like that puts lots of calories on it causes your buttocks to grow relentlessly. Now the other choice is a protein. So personally, Dr. Bob, he starts his day with a protein, but I eat vegetable proteins. You see, you do, Dr. Bob? Through the day, I'll eat carrots and cucumbers and red peppers and orange peppers and radishes and a half an apple and nuts because, see, I'm trying to keep my blood sugar the same all day long. So I'm not really craving anything sweet, but I buy carrots. You can say, Dr. Bob, carrots, they have protein in it. Vegetables have protein in it. You could throw some green beans in there if you want. So if you start your day off with a protein, that's like putting a log on the fire. Pastries are paper, protein are logs. So all day long, your blood sugar stays the same. So you're not craving. I'd rather have you have a hard-boiled egg or a scrambled egg with vegetables for breakfast. Not toast, not rye or wheat or oat toast with jelly on it because see that will promote digestive challenges and it'll cause insulin to spike and you really want to avoid bagels in the morning because ba and I'm not against bagels, here where I'm coming from. I'm trying to help your blood sugar. You want to start your day off with a protein. 
I'd rather have you have a piece of organic deli meat. I'd rather have you have turkey sausage with an egg, not necessarily with toast, or have some nuts because, see, you want your blood sugar to stay stable through the daytime. So, Dr. Bob, one of your, you're known for your Dr. Bob's ABCs, half a red apple, beets, and carrots. Well, where would you suggest, as you're talking about you have the bag and you do it within, you know, without and throughout the day, how would you suggest somebody to do that? Well, I get a red apple and I cut it in half and I put that in a plastic bag. And I also get either a medium carrot or four or five baby carrots and I cut that up and I put it in the bag. And then we put beets on our salad. So Debbie and I eat at least a third cup of beets every day. Now, yes, beets have fiber. And yes, beets are basically a sugar kind of vegetable. But the fiber in the uh, beet is going to lower your cholesterol by 40%. So we incorporate vegetables throughout the daytime period. Now, Debbie, you know, there's another section in the book that we talk about oil, and there's so much misconception about oil. I use olive oil every day in my salad. I eat avocados on a regular basis. We use oil, healthy oil, in our, our lives. We do not use corn oil. We do not use soy oil. We do not use genetically engineered oil, which is commonly soy oil, by the way. We use organic-based oil. See, your cell membranes are made up of fat. You want to put good oil. You never heat flax oil. We actually have a rice oil that's on our website that can heat up to over 400 degrees. Olive oil usually starts to smoke about three, three and a quarter. You do not want to overheat your oils, but oils promote life. And oils are very significant hair, skin, hormones. And Deb, the, in the book, and I, I learned this along the way, this happens to be a miniature ionic breeze. And I know many of you right now have received gifts of um, scented candles for Christmas time, holiday time, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Lord knows any day. But scented candles, unless they're really organic or come from a pure source, that chemical that comes out is actually quite toxic. And the manufacturer of this particular air cleaner will tell you not to use a, a um, scented candle in an enclosed room because the synthetic vapors and debris will actually coat the plates of this. Day. Wow. It is no different than the plates in your lungs. Wow. You know what, Dr. Bob, and th that's really prevalent as far as candles. Well, you everywhere. know, because everybody likes candles and they want their house to smell fresher. I know that there's organic soy candles. I know beeswax candles. Most beeswax candles, though, do not have a fragrance to them at all. So if people are looking for fragrance, they're not going to get it from there. So I would suggest they really look at their source and read the label on Gotta what's inside of it. Yes. Dr. Bob, this, of course, is my favorite toy <laughs> or prop, should I say. But I think it's because when I looked at this, it just it reminded me of all tied up in knots. And that's how people are sometime. And I know you have a couple different tips throughout the book in regards to how to alleviate and eliminate some of the stresses in your life. You know, Deb, I have to tell you, and once again, we have been practicing since 1978. Probably one of the leading causes of dysfunction in our practice are people who are stressed. And you know why stress is an issue? Because stress causes the pH in your body to become acid. And your body needs minerals to neutralize the acid. But minerals are the spark plugs to the body. That's why we encourage Celtic sea salt. Another way to minimize the impact of stress. Believe it or not, Debbie and I have stress. You know, we are on the go, but we sleep. We don't eat sugar. We don't drink alcohol. Besides praying and having the Lord in our life, which is a really integral part of our marriage, we also exercise. We exercise as often as we can in the climate that we live in but we lift weights, we use bands, we do calisthenic type of exercises, we ride our bikes. Exercises produce a hormone in our brain called an endorphin. Now I'm sad to report this next statistic to you, 
But I know that in America, Americans consume $27 billion of antidepressant type of medications. And what we have found from our experience, one of the leading causes of depression happens to be a low thyroid. So if you have cold hands and cold feet, wide spaced teeth, thinning hair, constipation, high cholesterol, those are body signals of a low thyroid. What I'm holding in my hand right now is a shower dechlorinator. Because see, I know that most of you took a shower today or yesterday or will tomorrow in a four by five gas glass chamber. You see, what does that mean, Dr. Bob? You're breathing in chlorine gas, which is toxic to your thyroid gland. And if your thyroid gland is not functioning optimally, that's one of the leading causes of depression. And I don't want anybody depressed because depression leads to despair and it's like you never get out of this never ending rut. So we're here to give you good news. Yes. We're here to make a difference in your life. You don't, and just be aware of the words you speak. I don't even have time to go into that, but whatever you speak is what's happening in your life. And we're speaking life into you right now. And what I'm holding here, this is a can. You know, if you eat canned food periodically, that's okay. But I want you to understand this, is that the layer in the inside of this can is a plastic resin called bisphenol A, which when they heat the food, the estrogen from that can goes into the food. So this is just one of many challenges that people have perpetually that's bothering their body. So that BPA impacts your liver. Now, we have a whole book just on female hormones alone, but this liver is a key organ. Ladies who are watching us right now and you have tender breasts and heavy menstrual flow, it's very possible that your liver is compromised, but I need to take a moment and talk about kids' health. And I know that Debbie talks about this a lot in our, on our programs, is we have a lot of children that come into our office. We have children that come in with chronic ear infections and sore throats and lung problems and growing pains and constipation and headaches and skin rash. You say, well, Dr. Bob, you're a chiropractor. What is chiropractic? I thought chiropractors treat neck and back pain. No, what we treat is the nervous system. And what we have learned is that your brain sits here and it continues on as the cord. And if you have a traumatic birth, the birth trauma itself can interfere with your brain's ability to send messages down. So I'm not necessarily pleading with you right now, but I'm gonna make this comment and suggestion. If you have a child that has a chronic fever, chronic headache, chronic growing pains, and they're just not going away, and you're tired of all the antibiotics, you ought to come and see us. Now, I don't have a license to take you off of medication. I have a license to educate you to make wise choices. We love children in our office. We love seniors in our office. There's a variety of conditions and categories in this book, from Debbie said, from sleeping properly, men's health, women's health, children's health, digestion, sleeping properly, breakfast, lunch, exercise. Debbie and I regular exercise regularly. I'm going to encourage you to exercise regularly. We have a chapter in here in areas on the glycemic index. The glycemic index is how your blood sugar is impacted by what you eat during the daytime.